Hello everyone, I'm your host Akuma and welcome back to another episode of Morrowind on Lasting Impressions. In our previous episode, we outfitted Kevin with some armor and a new weapon, and we infiltrated this bandit cave. We've already killed one bandit, really easily, and freed three slaves. Very good progress so far. Today, our first enemy is going to be a bandit wizard. Don't know how well Kevin's going to do against this, because if we look... Yeah, hi Kevin. If we look in his willpower... It is our ability to resist magic, and it is just as terrible as our personality tied for the lowest skills. Or, are they skills? Whatever. They're tied for the lowest skills that Kevin has. It's not going to look good for us if this is what we have to work with. So right down there is the wizard. Let's not waste any time. Let's waste a little bit more time. We can use the thief ring that we found last episode. And here we go. Where's the wizard? Here he comes. Now it is possible if you keep your distance, move left or right just a bit, we can make him waste all of his magic this way. And this is the same... Whoa, that was close. This is the same for every magic user in Morrowind. I'm just going to spin in circles. Oh, that was close. Whoops! Okay, let's not spin in circles. It's even... Aha, he ran out of magic. It's even true for... um. Atronox, like flame, fire, frost, <laughs> flame and fire, like uh, 810, that's not bad, I'll take it. Oh, what the heck, I'll just strip him naked and then dump his body. It's the same for even magical creatures, and I think it might be for the last boss too. I can't remember if he uses magic. I think I've only fought him once or twice. Oh, hi there. Oh, there's the archer that I told you about was at the end. That is a... A marksman, and you see that she doesn't have a bow. She's in fact throwing throwing stars at us. Yeah. Apprentice's probe, uh, kite and dagger. Yeah, sure, I got a lot of room. There's 14 kite and throwing stars. They only do two to three damage, but where I usually sell these, since one of my minor skills is marksman, I think I will hold on to these and use them to start practicing my marksman skills. We've also got a cloth left bracer, useless, since it's uh, for the hand. And we already have a chitin gauntlet for both hands, so common shoes and apprentice's lockpick. Now we dump the body. All that's left is to raid the bandit storage. Moon sugar, that is illegal. I'm going to take it. <laughs> scroll of Andusi's Unhinging. This is a popular scroll that we will find. Open 40 to 60 points on touch. I will not pick up the bowl. What else do we have in here? A chest? Steel longsword. Mm, that's pretty good. 20 for 80. Yeah, we'll take that. We'll probably sell it later on. Bitter green petals. This is all alchemy stuff. I'll take it just so we have something to work with alchemy later. Uh, the thing about the um, moon sugar... Oh. The thing about moon sugar and skooma in this game is that uh, people will not trade with you if you have skooma or moon sugar in your inventory there's even a just take all there's even a uh, person in the game who sells moon sugar and if you have moon sugar or skooma she won't trade with you even though she herself sells it very interesting the only ones who will buy moon sugar are people with a very low responsibility I think it is or maybe that's an oblivion people with a very low responsibility will buy from you or Khajiit the Kaji race loves moon sugar and skooma. They are quite addicted to it. Now, if you look around the corner here, there's a little bit of a path, but around that path is the door that we found last episode. So if I came around here, I would have gotten into a fight with a throwing star person, and right over there, the other bandit wizard might have seen me and started attacking me. So that could have been really bad. Seven gold, iron tonto. I'll probably sell. Th I'll sell that for money later. Yeah. There's a, six, there's a restore personality I'll probably never use. Uh, here's some alcohol, moon sugar. Gem feeder, soul trap for 60 seconds on target. That should be good to use when we start getting empty soul gems. Another on Dinsey's Unhinging. Even though it's a popular scroll and easy to find, it's not a bad scroll. Hey, <laughs> an iron saber! Just like the one we have. Spoiled cure poison. 
Even though it will cure poison, it will drain your speed. I think that's a little interesting that they added that in. Hound meat, that's uh, not bad. More gem feeder, a bottle, just a bottle, we'll ignore that. Gold, and what is that? A slave key, just like the one we currently have. Right, there's a little secret path down here in the water. I think I see a skeleton down there. What we need to worry about first though is air. Alright. Is there anything up here? There's a rock. It looks like there's a chest on the rock. Rusted chest. Yep. More alcohol. A bottle and three gold. Not really worth it, but maybe in the long run it'll help me out some. Now you notice I can stay right up here and get air, but the moment I go down there I won't. So, you can actually peek your head down below the water and look around without spending the air. But the second we go down, here we go. What have we got in here? Fishing pole, one and seven, I'll take that. What is that thing? Iron saber, okay. Corpse, eh, bone meals, basket. Alright, paying attention to our air. We have to escape quickly. Anything else down here? If there is, I don't see it. In fact, we should probably use a thief ring that should give us a little bit more speed to swim up faster. Alright, we are out. Kevin has cleared out the bandit cave. This is a good thing. So I'll hurry on out of here now because there's nothing left to do. They're, the slaves are still up there, but they will be gone by the time we re-enter the area. And what I'm actually going to do is come over here by the fire. Since we have used the... Oh wow, we got quite a full inventory now. Where is that it? No. Oh. Since we have used the slave key, the only thing that's good for is opening that one door and the prisoner's bracers. Since we've done everything we can do with it, I'm actually going to drop it next to the fire. In a place where we can find it if absolutely necessary, which is a good thing to do when you start dropping keys. If we need it, we will come back for it, but I don't want my inventory taken up by keys. We are out! The bandit cave has been successfully cleared, and there's a coat of flour over there I would like to go grab. Is this something? No, it's not. Draggle tail. Coat of flour for me. Draggle tail. And pool pod for me. Nothing there. One more. Alright. Looks good. So now we are pretty much ready to go anywhere and do anything to Morrowind, but after going through that bandit cave, our inventory is really full. Our weight is 236 out of 250. We need to unload some stuff. First thing I want to do is use our armor's hammer to repair some of our equipment. Alright, good. And how much did that increase our armor skill by? Six. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a good start, and we need to increase our armor skill as much as possible so that we can continue to successfully repair our, our armor. It is possible to have your weapons shatter in this game. And then you're kind of desperate to... Hi. So then you're kind of desperate to... Shut up! I'm trying to talk! <laughs> so then you can... Uh... Pfft. I forgot what I was going to say. You people of Satanine! First it was Fargoth, and then it's all the rest of you. Arlay, my friend! Buy some of my junk. Yep, yep, there it is. You have to get rid of the moon sugar. And also the skooma. So, moon sugar, 13. Drop all 13. Where's skooma? There we go. And where'd the skooma go? Oh, right where I was standing. Now will you do business with us? Yes, he will. All right. Seller has 800 gold. The thing about the merchants in this game is that they have a set number of gold. It will replenish every 24 hours. But if you try to sell them like an artifact, they can't buy it from you because they don't have enough money to do so. They won't rip you off in this game. Well, they will buy and sell at prices that are affordable to them, but they won't blatantly rip you off. So I'm already got, I've already equipped my iron saber, and we got two in there. So I'm gonna sell these two, 
Kite and Dagger, I will never use. Actually, maybe I should hold on to one of those. Shard Axe? Um, you can have that. That really lowered our weight. Tonto? Uh, Steel Longsword. More weight lost. Cloth Left Bracer? I won't use that. I've already got some boots. And pauldrons. Mm, yeah, those are worse. Now we sell a whole bunch of clothes. Common clothes, common clothes, common... Uh, I'm going to sell the dead guy's shirt. <laughs> I feel morbid. Common shoe, shoe, shoe. Expensive belt. Pretty good. Restore personality. It's a really strong potion. I don't think I'm ever going to use it. So I'll just sell it, and I'm sure we'll find more later. Uh, think about the alcohol in this game. Grief will fortify your strength. Excellent way to get out of a dungeon and carry a little bit more with you. 20 points. I think that'll get you uh, 50 more carry weight. So we could have up to 300 right now. Very good. Even if it drains your agility, so you want to move fast. We'll sell the grief though. Mazte, fortifies strength, 20 points for 60 seconds, drains willpower, and something else. We will not know what that something else is until we upgrade our alchemy skill further. Right? Right. Pretty sure. Yeah. Spoiled cure poison. I'm not that anxious for poison, but... Mm. Drain speed. Drain speed. The thing about some of the po the poisons in this game is that they can be deadly. Some of them will last long and very long and do very little damage, but they are long lasting enough that they will kill you. Others will kill you in a matter of seconds. If that. So I think I should hold on to cure poison. I think it'll be worth suffering a little bit of speed loss just to get rid of some poison. I sold it when I didn't want to. Hold on to it. And pool pod, ashyam. I'm gonna hold on to some of these ingredients. Probably sell the heavier stuff. Uh, large quama egg. Yeah, th those are not bad, but they weigh two pounds. Rat meat, I'll sell. Uh, water walking. I think it's worth the wait. You are worth your weight in, well, gold. So got tax record. I guess we're going to hold on to this for a while until the quest is complete. It's not quest uh, necessary. I think. Hopefully. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe it will be. But I'm going to hold on to this for now. We want these scrolls. They're very good scrolls. Um, I might sell one gem feeder scroll though. We also have a torch. Uh, I guess I should hold on to the torch. It's kind of dark in caves. Never use the basket. Never use the bowl. <laughs> We're not going to use the fishing pole. You can't use fishing poles in this game. It'd be cool if they let you, even though nobody would ever use them. But I'm not going to use the fishing pole, and we can sell the hound meat. Um, is that it? Oh yes, daggers. We have an iron dagger for who can do 5 damage. This can do four damage. Let's sell uh, the chitin dagger. And again, I am holding on to the iron dagger because it is safe to do so. You remember I said in the first or second episode it's good to have a short blade because they weigh little and they are reliable? Yeah, well that's the thing. If my iron saber breaks, I forget to repair it enough that it breaks, I am going to be completely defenseless unless I have a fireball scroll or something like that but you can only use a scroll once before it's gone forever. And I would like to have a little bit of a backup, so I'm taking in the Iron Dagger, and I should probably get used to using Throwing Stars. Anything else we want to do? No? Alright, that's it. Total sold. Uh, let's try to increase it to 415. Can I do it? I can. Wow. I did not think it would work, but it worked. Actually, now that we have quite a bit of gold, let's see if we can get a couple spells. Hearth Heal is really impressive. So is Resist Magic. Hmm. Maybe we should get Resist Magic, and we can use that to practice a restoration. There's also Father's Hand, which can use Sanctuary, but we have a 60 second Sanctuary spell that we can use on ourselves, so maybe not. I guess we'll buy Resist Magic and Hearth Heal. There's also Fireball and Frostbite, but like I said before, 
We really need to get good in destruction magic before we even think about practicing. Bet this is a cheap spell, Bat. I don't really want to absorb fatigue. This looks like a really cheap destruction spell. And it's a target spell, too. What's, what are these things? Oh, they're also target. That one's touch. The touch spells are generally a lot more powerful than the target spells, because you have to get right in their face and use it. Um, Frost damage, 15 to 30 points. 2 to 20. 2 to 20. Eh... Uh, I don't know. I'll think about it. Maybe not now. And Jack of Trades. Fortify Luck. Fortify. But it costs quite a bit of gold, so I'm guessing it'll cost a lot of effort to try to use. So I think that's done for now. How are you? And you'll see that uh, RLA's appearance changed. He put on the robe that we sold him. That's something else that you'll see NPCs do. If you sell them something that is better than what they are currently wearing, they will wear it. So I could probably have everybody in this game wearing glass armor. Except glass armor is extremely hard to find. So, probably not. Talvise, can you tell us anything? Let's see if we can bribe her with 10 gold to increase her disposition toward us. Oh, come on. Now she's probably not going to tell us anything. Yeah, background, latest rumors. Oh, I hear there's been some trouble up at, Force Fro at, Force yeah, at Fort Frostmoth. Never heard of it? It's on an island called Solstheim, north of Vardenfell. That is something about Game of the Year Edition. Solstheim, we will not go there until we are at least level 30, maybe 35. The enemies there, the standard enemies, will tear you apart. The difficult enemies, <laughs> yeah, you're not going to survive. Little advice, if you find yourself stumbling, stumbling into trouble when you're tired, stop being so reckless. Keep an eye out. If you're entering unfamiliar territory and you think it might be hostile, slow down to a walk, look around, catch your breath, and be ready for trouble. Keep an eye on your fatigue is what this means. It's harder to hit enemies when your fatigue is low. It is harder to even cast spells when your fatigue is low. You want your fatigue to stay high in this game. It's not like stamina in the other games. Your fatigue is important. Little secret? She won't tell us a little secret. Can you ask her about the murderer? Someone finally got him, huh? Well, it's no surprise, I suppose. No one likes a tax collector, especially one who flaunts his wealth while taking our hard-earned cash. Only one who could stomach him at all was the very over in the lighthouse. The two of them spent some time together. Shame, really. She, sh she seemed like a nice woman. <laughs> Such a shame. She was so nice. And instead, she liked the guy that everybody hated. Horrible of her. What's her trade? She won't tell us that either because her disposition is too low. I probably should not have tried. Services, no. Solstheim, a miserable place from what I've heard. Too cold for me. I understand there's someone in cool who, who will take folks there, though. She won't tell us someone... Alright, so that is it for Talvise. She won't tell us anymore. Now, I didn't show it on the other episodes, but let's take a look at the world map. Here, these are those two spots here are Sedanine. Up here is Pelagiad. Very nice little town. I like it. It feels very homey to me. Up here is the Moon Moth Legion Fort, where we can go to join the Imperial Army, I believe it was? Up here is Balmora, where the main quest is trying to take us to. We will get there. Balmora is a very good city. You can get a lot done in there. There are a lot of guilds you can join as well. So we will certainly be in Balmora frequently during the game. And up here... Oh, I thought it was going to show us, but no. Somewhere over in this area is the city of Cool. It's a port city. Yeah, it's a cool city. It's a port city, and there are two boats for transport, which will take you around the place. This little spot up here. Very strong enemies in there. Don't want to go up there. But this is how big the world is. You can see where the volcano is on the map, too. The majority of this place is a wasteland because of the volcano's eruptions. If you look up a picture of... Wow, that little spot right there looks like an alien. This is this looks like an alien right here. <coughs> Sorry, that was a bad distraction. But um, if you look up a map of Morrowind, you'll see that a lot of this place is just volcanic ash covered. The rest of it is a little is mostly grass. There are no forests. Uh, there's no snow except up at uh, Solstheim. Can we actually see Solstheim? 
Solstheim is covered in snow, and it is a forest, but... Yeah, there it is. There's the island of Solstheim. It looks like we can walk over there, but I'm pretty sure that even with water walking, we can't get up there. We have to take a boat. But we won't be going up there until very, very, very late in the game. Not at the end of the game, but very late. And this place all down here is marshlands. And what a marshland it is. It is easy to get ambushed and attacked and killed. But there are quite a few caves. There's a lot of smugglers dens to find down here. Anyway, I just thought that was interesting and one you guys might have thought to see. Uh, as our fatigue is recharging, let's look at our magic. I'm going to use this one more time just for the enchant bonus. There's our power. Hearth heal. Yeah. You see the little red bar? Probably not, because it's so small, our restoration is not very good. That is our chance of casting the spell. The red bar is our percentage chance compared to the black bar. Very little chance of casting the spell. Don't count on it. Resist magic? Better chance, but still less than a quarter. <laughs> and of course, we can always cast uh, scrolls. But that is going to be it for this episode. We are done with Morrowind for this weekend. So tell me, guys, what's Kevin going to do next? Be the little voices in Kevin's head and give him direction on where to go. What are our options so far? Well, as always, we have the main quest we can do. We can't exactly join any guilds around here. Satanine is pretty devoid of guild activity. So we could go up to Balmora where there is a lot of guild activity and possibly join a couple guilds, possibly. Alternatively, we could look further into the murder of Prosecus, Vitellius. We could also go upstairs and talk to a guy that we heard about has some money troubles. What else is in our journal? Huh, nothing new, surprisingly. Uh, further about the murder, uh, there is somebody at the lighthouse who used to spend time with the victim. That might be a good lead if we decide to look into the murders. But there's a few options for you. Alternatively, we could explore around the coast. If we do, let me know what directions you would like to go. Because there's quite a bit you can find in almost any direction, except out to sea, in which case you will drown or get ambushed by some of these stronger water creatures out there that make slaughterfish look like, well, a fish. Anyway. Let me know, you guys, what's happening next episode. Leave all your comments below. I will read all of them right before recording the next episodes. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Morrowind. As usual, click the like button if you like the video. Feel free to subscribe if you are new here so you can see the latest Morrowind episodes. And I will see you all next weekend. Take care.